Here's a three minute ad break. Now we're moving on to this Moen Rabani thread, apparently, that he like on 29th of January, I participated in a debate organized by Lakes Friedman on Israel Palestine alongside Normal Finkelstein, Benny Morris, and Stephen Bonnell, stage name Destiny. Apart from reposting a link to the recording of the event, I've thus far retained from comment. I've done so on the grounds that people interested in the discussion and prepared to endure a five hour video can watch it themselves and make up their own minds about the various issues discussed rather than being told what they think by a participant. Bonnell had decidedly taken a different approach. In addition to multiple hour-long podcasts broadcast before the event, he began relitigating the discussion from virtually the moment it ended. Talking to Twitter and YouTube, he immediately began promoting his own version of events, including in the podcast issued prior to the debates, the 14th of March release, that were significantly longer than the debate itself. Much of Bonnell's commentary consisted of juvenile name-calling, insults, and distortions directed primarily at Norman Finkelstein. Bonnell's obsession with Finkelstein and his fixation with convincing viewers he acquitted himself with the distinction and exchanges with Finkelstein before these were publicly available speaks for itself. Now, let me tell you, for those of you who don't understand adult speak, what Moen Rabani here is saying is my man, Mr. Bonarelli was coping, was coping big time. He was, as a matter of fact, cope maxing. That's what he was doing because he got fucking stirred. Mr. Bonarcello was cope maxing before the debate. After the debate was released, he never stopped cope maxing as does his repeatedly expressed view that nothing of substance was uttered during the debate and watching it was a waste of time. Bonnell also lamented that he missed a gangbang to participate in the debate. <laughs> as for my own contribution, Bonnell appeared to take particular exception to an observation of mine regarding a statement he made regarding apartheid in one of his pre-event podcasts. During that particular podcast, Bonnell stated that he doubted either Finkelstein or I would be watching. In fact, since I hadn't previously heard of Bonarelli, I had not previously come across anything he has published in the Middle East. He apparently hasn't and was entirely unquaint, unacquainted with his views. I made it a point to watch. Full disclosure. I was at the time unaware that Bonarelli had in previous podcasts identif identified himself as a pro-genocide with respect to Israel's mass killing of Palestinians. Or that among other displays of familiarity with the region, he couldn't identify Bashar Assad, thought Recep Tayyip Erdogan as the president of Israel, and was apparently unable to locate his favorite menace state on a map. Oh, it's so funny watching like normal adults be forced to interact with this and being like horrified about even like a little bit of scratching of the surface just reveals horrifying to them because like this is what a lot of people don't understand. We often get like so hyper focused on the little circles that we create online and we think like, oh, well, everyone is like thinking like me they love this shit. and then this kind of stuff is supposed to like draw you out of it for a second because this is a dude who doesn't know anything about him do not know nothing about him right and he only scratched the surface he doesn't know half the shit this dude has said and he is horrified because of course these opinions are horrifying to the average human the way that so many people in these uh in these circles like the way that they carry themselves is shocking to the average person it's shocking. It's gross. And I don't know how to describe it to people who are so caught up. They're so goddamn invested in like the echo chamber that they have cultivated. And a lot of people say that about me too. And half the time, these people are working in overtime to make me uh, come across like a toxic individual. And when I'm in the real world doing normal sh there's a reason why so many people go, I like his non-political stuff. I like him when he's just like interacting with other human beings in the real world, that he doesn't come across like a douchebag or a dickhead. It's because I'm not. That's the difference. I have like some level of social understanding. These guys don't. And they lean into that and they make that their superpower almost. And because there's a lot of other people online who have the same exact shortcomings, that kind of becomes the norm for them until someone that is not initiated in the world of like debate and discourse online and all this shit, looks into it from the outside and goes, oh my God, that is so toxic. That is so gross. In any event, during the pre-debate podcast in question, Bonnell was explaining to his audience how he would dispense with the findings that Israel is an apartheid state. Purposely ba basing his views on the legal definition of apartheid, separateness. Bonnell asserted that Jim Crow did not constitute apartheid, but that Arab states have not extended citizenship to Palestinian refugees in their territory is a clear example of this crime. I, rec I recounted this statement to Bonnell during the debate. Once again, claiming to base himself on the legal definition of apartheid, Bonnell changed his position somewhat. 
this time to, I don't know if Jim Crow would have qualified for apartheid. Why did he do that? Because he recognized that he was basically talking to a larger audience there, and he didn't want to come across like a ass or a douchebag, at least on that issue. For good measure, he added, just like if Israel were to literally nuke the Gaza Strip and kill 2 million people, I don't know if that would qualify for the crime of genocide. It remains unclear why the legal definition of apartheid leaves Bonnell clueless about the status of Jim Crow, but sufficiently confident to indict Arab states. After all, Jim Crow was a formal system of rigidly enforced segregation in the United States, imposed by state authority, enforced by legislation and violence, and confirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court. By contrast, Arab states were at worst, exercising a universally recognized sovereign right to not extend collective citizenship to foreign refugees on their territory. Rather than clarify his position, he quickly changed the subject to Israeli civilian casualties on the 7th of October. Perhaps Mr. Bonarelli thinks there is the state named Arabia that is withholding citizenship from its Palestinian minority, or simply doesn't know or care to know how apartheid operated in his own country. What is certain is that he is entirely unaware that Jim Crow served as a model and inspiration for the South African white minority regime's racist policies, which bequeathed us the term and the crime of apartheid. In his post-debate podcast, the above exchange metamorph uh, metamorph metamorphosized metamorphosed. I had merely restated his own words. Oh, uh, metamorphs into my playing the race card and the like. In fact, I had merely restated his own words verbatim seeking an explanation for his rather unorthodox understanding metamorphosized i think it's metamorphosed i thought it was metamorphosized but maybe i'm wrong right, anyway seeking an explanation for this rather unorthodox understanding and misunderstanding of what constitutes apartheid but the above incident was trivial compared to bonnell's multiple victory laps concerning the use of two latin legal terms mens rea and dola specialis with respect to South Africa's 29th of December 2023 application to the International Court of Justice instituting proceedings against Israel under the 1948 Genocide Convention. I'll start by reproducing the relevant exchange. And then he goes into it. I don't know if you use the term dola specialis. That's the intentional part of the genocide. I don't know that term. I think it's called dola specialis. It's the most important part of genocide, which is proving that it is a highly special intent to commit genocide. It's possible that Israel could. That's mens rea. Yes, I understand the state of mind, but for genocide, it's called dola specialis. It's a highly specialized, special intent. Did you read the case? Yeah, it is a highly special intent. Inaudible. This was not the first time Bonnell that day questioned whether Finkelstein, arguably the world's foremost forensic scholar, a voracious reader, and someone who has had on multiple occasions discussed the relevant text in detail, had read the document in question. Yeah, by the way, saying that it, trying to accuse Norm Finkelstein of not reading is really funny. It's like accusing an eagle of not flying, okay? That's what eagles do, man. That's what Norm does. He reads. You might not like his style. You might think he's rude, but you cannot question whether or not he has read the work. He writes the work, and he definitely reads the work. Regarding my own ignorance of dola specialis, and for that matter, mens rea, I know neither Latin nor legalese. And when confronted with such terms, resort to... Uh, to a search engine to look up their translation in the language I understand and typically consign the original to the memory uh, whole. Briefly, and to the interest of my understanding, mens rea denotes criminal intent and dola specialis, specific intent. Dola specialis is, in other words, a subcategory of mens rea. What is at the issue with this specific instance is that in its application to the ICJ, South Africa references spe uh, dola specialis four times, but mens rea not once. As far as Bonnell was concerned, this means not only that dola specialis rather than mens rea that is required to demonstrate the intent to commit genocide, but also that Finkelstein had not read the document in question. For the record, the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Crime and Genocide, South Africa and Israel's oral arguments before the ICJ, on the 11th of January 2024, the court's order, initial ruling of 26th of January, and for that matter, Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, mentioned neither the Latin term and speak only of intent. Law tip, dola specialis is quite literally another name for mens rea. It's just a more specific name, meaning intent to destroy. He was basically taking up a similar logic to the statement, a bratwurst isn't a type of hot dog. Thank you for the law tip. It's not just Biomart. Hassan is a buy is also doing law tips now. Biomart, you got to get on your... Biomart, you got to get on your law tip game, dude. He's coming for your territory right now. <laughs> Brata specialis worstus. Anyway, I'm, I'm skipping all this stuff. I was stating the obvious. Um... I was stating the obvious that the critical point of contention in a genocide case is providing, cr proving criminal intent. That's mens rea. 
And of course, everyone in the room understood that the threshold under the genocide convention is proving criminal intent to commit genocide. Given that Finkelstein has vested interest in the matter, I thought it would make sense to get an independent opinion and approach an international lawyer who has participated in cases before the ICJ unrelated to Palestine for clarification. Here's the international lawyer's response. In the crime of genocide, both mens rea and dola specialis are essential elements that must be proven to establish criminal liability. Mens rea refers to the mental state of the perpetrator when committing the acts that constitute genocide. The perpetrator must have intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such, which can be in inferred from the action statements and policies of the perpetrator, which, by the way, Israel conveniently falls under that categorization almost entirely, which is why many international cr uh, court of justice lawyers that have successfully uh, uh, defended uh, against, or sorry, successfully litigated the crime of genocide in the past have said, this is a case unlike any other where it is so open and shut. The amount of readily available information that Israel and Israeli officials and Israeli soldiers on the ground where you can like basically create a direct line of communication without like uh, having to actually parse through like what the intent is, is pretty f crazy. Uh, not to toot my own horn here. But uh, I was the first lawyer ever to win anything under the Genocide Convention from the International Court of Justice uh, that goes back to uh, 1921. I single-handedly won two world court orders for the Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina against Yugoslavia uh, to cease and desist from committing all acts of genocide. And based on my careful review, of all the documents so far submitted by the Republic of South Africa, uh, I believe South Africa will win an order against Israel to cease and desist from committing all acts of genocide uh, against the Palestinians. Second, when the World Court gives this cease and desist order against Israel, the Biden administration will stand condemned under Article 3, Paragraph E of the Genocide Convention that criminalizes complicity in genocide. And clearly, we know that the Biden administration has been aiding and abetting Israeli genocide against the Palestinians here for quite some time. They admitted it from the jump, and they kept admitting it every day, and they haven't stopped. This 1,000% validates Finkelstein's charge that Boner has read no further on any given subject than that subject's Wikipedia page? No, that's not true either. It's actually worse than that. Mr. Boner Cello doesn't just read Wikipedia pages. Mr. Boner Cello scours through Wikipedia pages to find adequate counters to what he assumes is going to be a talking point. That's the problem. Because the reality is, for as slanted as Wikipedia is, on an issue as open shut as like Israel's genocide of Palestinians, you can read Wikipedia and, and gain the knowledge necessary to understand exactly what the situation looks like, no matter how slanted that information is. That's not what he's doing. My point from the jump wasn't that like, oh, Mr. Bonarelli only reads Wikipedia pages. My point was that he had already established his position as pro-genocide and that that was objectively good. And then he engaged in post hoc rationalizations for it. And he utilized Wikipedia talking points specifically armed with like little debate pervertry moments to try to make his argument seem more coherent. And of course, if you're doing that against someone who is not Norm Finkelstein or Moen Rabani, who, uh, even if they are on the right side of the issue of Palestinian genocide, they might not be able to deal with that. Norm, on the other hand, is a very specific demon. He is a stubborn debate pervert on top of being incredibly well-read. So he, in many respects, is a perfect counter to Mr. Uh, Mr. Boner Dog's rhetorical prowess he has rhetoric he's armed with rhetoric and he can try to catch you in a logical trapping uh, of his own device that he has cultivated specifically to like 
Uh, he's cultivated specifically to make you seem like you don't know what you're talking about. But you can't do that to someone who is just so incredibly, incredibly well-read on this subject matter and is also unwilling to let things go. Literally posted about how pissed he was that two thirds of his two thirds of his prep was useless because Finkelstein didn't fall into his talking points. Exactly. Because debates for the most part, especially online, are just about like trying to trap your interlocutors. That's it. And if your interlocutors are not falling on that trap, then you're cooked. You have nothing left. Because you are not a vociferous reader. You're not a big reader. And you're against one of the biggest readers of all time. You're not going to be able to f scroll through your iPad fast enough for talking points when you're talking against someone like Norm. He's, he's on a totally different level. More recently, we have the following from Anatomy of a Genocide, the 22 March report issued by Francesca Albanese, the UN Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Palestinian territories occupied since 1967. Francesca Albanese is goaded, by the way. She is the one who very clearly said... Israel does not have a right to defend itself in an offensive campaign in Gaza as a belligerent occupier. Israel has no legal basis to engage in acts of violence in the Gaza Strip. She was right, and she still is right, and eventually the world will, you know, come to that conclusion, perhaps too soon. It already, I mean, not too soon, sorry, perhaps too late. It is already too late, but that does not take away from the truth. The crime of genocide comprises two interconnected elements. The actus reus, the commission of... Any one or more specific acts against a protected group, these are enumerated. The mens rea, the intent behind the commission of one or more of the above-mentioned acts that must be established, which includes two intertwined elements, a general intention to carry out criminal acts, dolus generalis, and a specific intention to destroy the target group, such as dolus specialis. In other words, dolus specialis is a subdivision of the legal threshold called mens rea, Exactly as Finkelstein stated. As they say, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. The end. What is this? My friend agrees with D on his genocide stance uh, and other takes. I don't know how to bring him out because I think he's going to spiral down a hole. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, time can heal all wounds, I think. And maybe he will snap back to reality. I don't know. I hope. It sucks, man. I've experienced this in my in my like life as well. D claims that because Groypers posted clips of him not knowing basic facts about the Mena region, anyone else who brings up his lack of knowledge is just repeating Nazi talking points. Yeah, that's really funny that he's that's his like uh last level of coping. What is this? Thread. Stephen Bonnell, stage name Destiny, responded to my previous thread with a series of his own tweets. True to form, it contained more juvenile name calling, cowardly f disgusting human, sniveling worm, etc. Regarding the issue of genocide, he appears to have appointed himself the resident expert of the phenomenon. How can you idiots claim to be scholars or have a strong opinion about genocide while still refusing to understand this term, dola specialis? Stop talking about this. You are not qualified. That is so funny that he's like presenting himself as qualified to talk on this issue when like basically every subject matter expert disagrees with him on this. Like people who have successfully litigated the issue of genocide in the international court of justice disagree with him but of course it doesn't matter i'm the expert why don't these people understand that i'm the expert and it's so funny he's like no i'm the expert please it's a hug box of his own making and there are a lot of people who here's the thing i think one of the funniest aspects of this entire saga is that so many people at this impasse are left with this choice it's very simple. Either you start recognizing that maybe this infallible beacon, this deity of debate that you thought was like impossible to shake down is actually, at least on this issue, intellectually fraudulent. Now, this should call into question all of the other issues that he's debated on and get you to think like, perhaps he's just confident and and talking about these issues from a framework that makes sense to me, maybe I should reconsider immediately listening to everything he's saying and repeating it out in the wild and agreeing with him 100%. Or you go, no, everyone else is wrong. The saddest aspect of this isn't the radicalization, in my opinion. I mean, that's sad in and of itself, but the, the, but the really silly part of it is that this is training you to be intellectually lazy. Many people probably joined Mr. Bonercelli's community 
because they saw him to be a giant, an intellectual titan, that he was always doing the research and coming correct and killing these fucking debaters in the marketplace of ideas by bringing up facts and, and, and doing all of this, right? Like, cause he does, he, he owns like anti-vaxxers all the fucking time. Right. And that is appealing for a lot of people. They want to also own anti-vaxxers in a similar vein. So they listen to him, they listen to his talking points and they repeat it. And it's funny because like on that issue, he is right. And his research is correct. Except on this issue, He's leading you astray. He's making you just as intellectually lazy as the anti-vaxxers. He is ultimately the anti-vaxxer in the Israel-Palestine conversation. That is the sad state of affairs for his audience that's like maybe in a very genuine way looking for someone who is, is going to basically own the, these, these silly anti-science people when he himself is... The one who is the anti-science, uh, taking the anti-consensus position and the anti-science position and the anti-truth position in this regard. I think it, it does stem from his own personal biases, specifically uh, uh, his, his Islamophobia. I think that, like, he kind of rides for that. That's a genuine position that he holds. It's unfortunate. But I think that, like, his anti-Arab sentiment and his Islamophobia is clouding his judgment. I want to be very, very, very clear here because people seem to misunderstand this. People don't get this. Destiny's joke borders pretty hard on Islamophobia. I am Islamophobic and I hate Islam. I am an atheist. Yes. I will make Islamophobic jokes because I do hate Islam and I am Islamophobic. And it, it, it basically blinds him to seeing the truth. And I think that a lot of people growing up in the United States of America in the Western world also share that Islamophobic sentiment as well. And they agree because they also have that cognitive bias. So they're looking for an out. They're looking for something that like reinforces their wrong opinions, not realizing that like you should probably investigate the issue a little bit further and come to your own conclusions. This is the Sam Harris phenomena. Sam Harris did this for years and it was very successful for him. Ironic because I'm pretty sure there are Boner Celli videos from like 2018 around that time when he's like owning Sam Harris is like uh, just unrestricted Islamophobia as backwards thinking. It's, it's interesting because remember, Sam Harris got fucking wiped by one email back and forth with, uh, with, with Noam Chomsky, if you recall. Sam Harris also famously would say that white supremacists are actually not radicalized by some kind of text, but instead radicalized by their own living conditions in the United States of America, but never offered that same analysis to Islam and Arabs in general as a whole. Islam was the radicalizing factor in Islamic terrorism, but material conditions are the radicalizing factor in white supremacy. It's ironic because he's right when he's talking about white supremacists, but he's so fucking off base because personally... He doesn't recognize that, like, there is humanity. He's lost in his own sauce. He doesn't recognize that there's humanity to Arabs. There's humanity to the, to the Muslims. If you can recognize that a dude living in fucking Iowa that can eat a burgal every fucking day of the week for every goddamn meal could be radicalized into becoming a white supremacist, you should absolutely understand when the material conditions are as bad as it is in the Muslim world due to imperialism, due to destabilization, deliberate acts of violence against the Muslim world by the Western world with material interest, then yeah, of course those guys are going to come across more fundamentalist. It has nothing to do with Islam at all. Sam Harris once said that out of all the worst ideas in the world, Islam is the worst one. D has literally said similar shit to that statement. Exactly. I don't understand it though. Why would he debate two experts on a subject if it was obvious he was going to be made a fool? It's like if you try to debate Bonarelli on divorce law or something. <laughs> Dunning-Kruger, arrogance, ego, uh, wanting to, to, you know, ride the clout train. That's what it is. Knowing that, like, his audience, like, his, his core fan base will not look at this and go, you know what, maybe this guy's in the wrong. Yeah, blind confidence. I mean, what do you expect from a dude, yes, who openly and proudly says he's Islamophobic and hates Muslims because he's an atheist? Of course, he's not going to say the same thing about uh, Jewish people and how he's anti-Semitic. Because Islamophobia is considered permissible. Islamophobia is a, a career 
boost for you in the United States of America because Muslims are oftentimes depicted as enemies. That is the best way to justify the failed war on terror. Um, Bonarelli admitted that he didn't go hard on Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens recently to maintain a relationship. He's a joke. Yeah, I mean, of course. He also said that being divorced twice is better than not having been married at all like you. The fuck? I, okay. I, I don't think people will agree with that statement. I think that's maximum. That's copious maximus. How can you idiots claim? Stop talking about this. You're not qualified. In point, The point, in fact, regarding this particular term I previously referenced, in addition to my own understanding of it, the views of Bonarelli, Norman Finkelstein, and an international lawyer involved in cases before the ICJ, and of Francesca Albanese, the author of a recent report on genocide on the UN Human Rights Council. See, this is the other thing. I think, like, if given the opportunity, he'd love to fucking debate, like, Francesca Albanese, too. Or, like, other ICJ lawyers. Because, like... Ultimately, he is, he believes that he's very skilled in going up against people who are infinitely more knowledgeable than him because he's very good at like boop, 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 hitting like all of the, all of the right talking points and making a fool of their interlocutors. And in many instances, he is very good at that, especially when he's talking to people who don't know what the fuck they're saying. Because that carries that carries big weight in the marketplace of ideas, especially because people that watch debates online watch it for fun. They are not watching it because they're like genuinely curious about all the facts. If they were, they wouldn't be watching a debate at all. They would be going to the fucking actual resources because it is, after all, for entertainment. This one just happened to be very entertaining for us. Everybody's good at debate lording when the opponent knows much less than them. That's not an accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it's ironic because they say that about me all the time. Hassan only debates people he knows he can win against. And it's funny because, like, so does Destiny. And then when he objectively gets fucking slapped around, he literally cries about it for a month on Twitter before and a month after, it seems. Oh, yeah, he owned Andrew Tate, but Andrew Tate is a dumbass. It's like, okay, what about, like, 700 fucking right-wing POA dipshits that you've debated that will take positions like... I think wife beating is good. No shit. On the subject of understanding terms, Bonarello doubles down on insisting that Jim Crow in the United States did not constitute apartheid. In his words, Jim Crow in the United States wasn't apartheid because people could travel, among other things, and the segregation wasn't done top-down constitutionally and federally, but rather geographically throughout the U.S. with a collection of local restrictions and policies. You're utterly clueless. In fact... As noted in my previous thread, Jim Crow was a formal system of rigidly enforced segregation in the United States imposed by a state authority, enforced by legislation of violence, and confirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court. Last time I checked, the U.S. Supreme Court, whose infamous 1896 ruling in Plessy v. Ferguson confirmed state laws enforcing segregation was a federal institution. But, assuming for the sake of argument that Bonelli's points about travel and federal edicts are correct, are these in any way relevant? Here's how the ICC defines apartheid which it classifies as a crime against humanity. He's basically taking advantage of the fact that the apartheid legal term came after Jim Crow, which is really funny because, like, the apartheid legal term came from the South African apartheid, which, as Moen Rabani points to, was greatly influenced by American Jim Crow laws. So just because it predates the legal definition of apartheid does not change the reality that it would fit the apartheid legal definition. And it's very strange to try to debate this point. It is also just as stupid as being like, well, South Africa constitutes an apartheid, but Israel doesn't because technically, uh, I don't know. What, what, did the, what did the Israel defenders say? Like, like technically there are, uh, I guess there are Arabs in Israel proper. So technically it's not an apartheid. It's like saying, and this is a thing that uh, Turks uh, will do all the time. It's like saying, oh, the Armenian genocide is not a real genocide because like, there were Armenians in Istanbul who weren't uh, killed, who weren't wiped out. That doesn't change anything. There was a deliberate ethnic cleansing and a targeting of an entire ethnicity. It's still a genocide. It's fucking ridiculous. You're just doing genocide denial. See, someone in the chat said, what, funny, I heard a very similar argument about a Turkish guy while talking about the Armenian genocide. It's such a bad argument. Exactly. The only reason why you can get away with this kind of argumentation without everyone going, oh my God, you're like a fucking genocide denier. What the fuck is wrong with you? Is that it is being done towards Muslims and uh, in the Western world, in the United States of America, 40 tweets to say absolutely nothing. What do you mean? 40 tweets to absolutely say nothing. I think this says a lot. If you look through all of this, parsing through the words and, and like defining, um, defining why Bonarcello is in the wrong, 
you're you're just signaling to everyone how stupid you are. It makes me sad, dude. You are basically like a Republican. You are literally doing the things that Republicans do all the time. You're doing the things that conservatives do. When they're like, this guy's so fucking stupid. He's still telling people to get the jab, dude. Pfft. Lol. <laughs> Imagine believing scientific consensus on the matter. It's like, what do you believe then? I don't know why people will, people are so ready to voluntarily admit their own ignorance and take it one step further, celebrate it. Especially when they're in an audience that like gets what this person is saying. If you kept it just into your hug box, I'm sure there are plenty of people who would agree with you and go, yeah, this guy's so stupid. He said nothing, lol. But like when you come to a different place and you try to do that same thing, people look at you like you're a dumbass. Don't it, aren't you embarrassed to admit that? Don't you admit that you reading 40 tweets of words is a lot, motherfucker? People read whole books. Aren't you embarrassed to admit that? Yeah, I mean, this is what happens when you think that you are on a path where you are celebrating intellectualism. And in some instances, the guy that has like led you down that path is, but in this circumstance is actually celebrating anti-intellectualism. It, it dulls your senses. It makes you intellectually incurious. And when you do that, you've lost, you've lost the plot. It sucks. Like you, you now find power in your ignorance. My coworker, that J Street said that because there are Arabs in the government of Israel, it's not an apartheid. How do I argue against that? I mean, it's silly as fuck. I don't know. How, I don't know what to explain to you other than the fact that there are five million Palestinians that live under Israeli control, and they do not have the same amenities as like citizens living inside of Israel. You can show them that there are Israeli institutions like B'Tselem, like human rights groups, like B'Tselem that openly state that Israel is an apartheid state, they straight up detail it as well. Restriction of civil liberties, freedoms, freedom of movement, freedom to participate in your religious uh, beliefs, freedom of speech. This kind of stuff is not up for debate, really. It took a very long time for like a lot of these human rights organizations to finally openly admit that, but it's been an apartheid in perpetuity. Pre-1967, it was an apartheid for all the uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel. Post-1967, it was an apartheid for the additional territories outside that Israel occupied illegally. Post-1967, Israel offered more rights to the Palestinian citizens of Israel to make up 25% of the population there. And yet there are still severe restrictions that would uh, be unconscionable in any other Western nation, like the fact that in Israel right now, Arabs, which are, uh, of course, not Arab Jews, but Arabs are... are defined by the government as those who are Christian or Muslim origin, because there are plenty of Arab Jews as well, but they're declared Jewish and therefore have full-blown rights. But Arab Christians and Arab Muslims cannot live wherever they want to. They do not have full-blown freedom. If they were to want to move into a Jewish-only neighborhood, legally, they can be barred entry from a Jewish-only neighborhood. This is Israel proper. It doesn't matter that there's an Arab in the Supreme Court. It doesn't matter that there are some Arab parties and as far as, like, genocide, how there is no genocide goes, well, I mean, there definitely is. And uh, there is definitely genocidal intent. Tell them to read the ICJ court uh, case that South Africa detailed. And I think at a certain point, you will uh, finally come to that recognition that 17K L fell off. Yeah, dude, I know. Um, I hope that your favorite... Uh, content creator will fall on to 17k one day you know what i mean <laughs> one day one day your favorite content creator who keeps saying i've fallen off will get to that 17k point and they'll fall on to that my fall off point so but assuming the sake of the argument that bono's position about travel and federal edicts are correct are these in any way relevant here's how the icc defines apartheid an institutionalized regime of systematic oppression and, and domination by one racial group over any other racial group or groups and committed with the intention of maintaining that regime. Seems the ICC didn't get Bonnell's memo about travel and federal regulations in time to incorporate them into the Rome statute. Bonnell also declines to address my other point in this regard, which specifically concerns Palestinian refugees. If, in his view, Jim Crow did not constitute apartheid, why does he insist the Arab states exercising their universally recognized sovereign right to not extend collective citizenship rights to refugees on their territory are guilty of a crime against humanity? The end.
Which is double ironic because he said he wasn't sure if nuking, killing two million Palestinians in Gaza would be genocide. That would quite literally be all of them. Yeah, right. It's like, how can you consider him unbiased after he openly said that? It should already be obvious. Nobody should listen to him. Yeah, but people will because we are not very intelligent, but we, wanna, we want to present ourselves as intelligent. It is a very human thing. And if we have these like biases and a person who is presenting themselves as like a super smart guy is very cleverly spitting talking points that maybe we can repeat to other people who are not as knowledgeable to make ourselves feel intellectually superior, then, you know, it's perfect. 